What's up everybody, my name is Joseph. Welcome to Lighthouse. And today we are gonna be blowing the lid off what's called the Marine Kingdom and Marine Witchcraft. And I'm going to explain to you how the Lord actually led me into this understanding. And I'm going to pray some prayers to actually help you escape from this bondage and to sever you away from spirit spouses, soul ties, the principalities and powers and dominions that control them, their legions, and um, yeah, while you're while we're starting this, if you just want to go ahead and take a moment and just repent to the Lord for any sexual immorality, any perversion, any lasciviousness, uh, any type of uh, masturbation, any type of pornography use, and any fornication, fornications, and um, any uh, any sexual immoral acts that have happened that you have directly done or that maybe your generation and bloodline, your lineage has done. So just take a few moments to do that. And Father God, I pray with them right now, Father God, that you would have mercy on their soul. You would have mercy on their mind, their body, their spirit and soul. Lord, it says that you are just to forgive and that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ask that you would begin to save them in this very moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so what is the Marine Kingdom and how does it operate? So the Marine Kingdom operates in the waters and they're spirits that come from the waters. And this is why Starbucks uses the logo, the Queen of the Coast. It's what it is. It's the Queen of the Coast, which represents Jezebel, which we bind and rebuke through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hike your skirt and run across the waters loose the dogs that ate jezebel so this is this is the understanding of coming into that these entities their whole job as we know is to steal kill and destroy and what they want to do through fornication and through sexual immorality is create a tight bondage because that's one of the hardest ones to break because this is why it, the number one thing that he warns us about through here on a continuum is sexual immorality, sexual immorality. It's just continuous through here. And the book of Proverbs touches on this numerous times is because what happens is, is when you have sex with somebody, and you enter into a covenant because that's what's actually occurring. You're exchanging blood. You're, ex you're exchanging mind, body, spirit, and soul. You're, exchange you're combining lineage. You're combining lineage. And in doing so, if this person carries this spirit or this spirit or has this bondage and this bondage, it very well could intertwine into your life and it very well could cause you know um, you to go down the road of addictions uh, drive you into depression anxiety uh, suicidal ideations a lot of mental health afflictions come because of the spirits that torment into the cycle of rejection because the, the real root comes down to that, that the, one of the real roots, one of the base roots to this is rejection. And then that rejection feeds. And then once that feeds, it causes the person to seek outside. And then, boom, next thing you know, they're trapped. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, it, it says that the Lord came to set us free. And we just declare that he sets the captives free in Jesus Christ's name. So... What is, the, what is the aspect of witchcraft that ties into this? Well, there are people called marine agents, okay? And they have an awareness of what happens in the spiritual realm and they understand that just like there is blessings that come from God, there are Things that Satan will give to his workers. So, for example, it's like this. You wake up and the Lord's like, hey, I need you to go pray. I need you to go pray. I need you to go do this. I need you to go do that. I need you to go do this. 
Okay, awesome. It's the same thing on the other side, especially for people who are aware. Hey, you got this assignment, and if you complete this, uh, this is what we'll do. I got you on this. Now, I want you to really think about this on a large, broad scale for a second. The entertainment industry, right? Think about why all they pump out is sex, drugs, alcohol, violence. That's it. In all genres, lightened down in some, in all manner of entertainment, is because they know that the majority of people break covenant early with God. Break covenant early. And in doing so, because of the manipulation that Satan has beguiled us into, that bondage then creates open doors which have the possibility and the likelihood of leading into addictions to drugs, which then lead into violence and street life, which then lead into further bondage. Now, when you think of celebrities and entertainers, why do they push this so much? And why are they paid so much? Why is it that they have so much money? Well, it's because storehouses, okay? There's multiple things that talks about storehouses in your house. What is your house? Well, your house is not your physical house, but your house where you dwell, where your spirit, soul, mind, body, where you dwell is this. This is your housing while you're here. Your housing carries virtue. This is why when the woman touched Jesus, he turned and said, who touched me? And they said, we're in a crowd of people. What do you mean who touched you? And he knew because his virtue had left him and transferred into the woman. And she was healed instantly. It's the same thing with us. We have a natural state which connects us directly to the Holy Spirit, which then, as it is written, do you not know that you are a temple for the Holy Spirit? So now that you know that you're a temple for the Holy Spirit and that spirits move in and out of temples, how do we secure this? And how do you get the Holy Spirit? Well, you confess your sins before the Lord Jesus Christ, who is just to forgive you, and you receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit, who does regeneration and sanctification. Now, back to the topic of the celebrity paradigm. Now, they push these out, right? Because they know that the moment that this covenant is broken, that whoever is the one that initiated this if it was an agent that was sent by satan this person had done now hebrews says that you should always entertain strangers because you've entertained angels unaware and here's the thing is it says that satan can masquerade as an angel of what light so i do believe and i know that demons do walk this earth masqueraded as angels of light which would be appearing to you as flesh and blood but they are literally just masqueraded and in the act of sleeping with one you are now initiated into this affiliation and also when we think of the internet okay caught in the world wide web when you masturbate and watch pornography, these, this right here that we're viewing each other on, this is a literal portal. And we plead the blood of Jesus over it. That's what this is. This is why the pornography industry is so big is because they understand the moment that a person initiates themselves into this, well, they're in bondage to it until they get deliverance. 
the bondage roots in that and then it takes its strongholds and then those spirits come in and then the spirits have their way with the person. We're talking about serious affliction, serious, serious afflictions. And I know all of this firsthand because he allowed me to go through it. So there is, once this happens, now I want you to think about this, your storehouse, right? Which contains your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, your heart, your destiny, all this. It's all encoded inside of you. Now, when these agents come in, and this is why some people, though, have dreams of sleeping with someone. That's not a real person. It's not your ex. It's not your future or who you think is your future spouse. That is a literal demon, which is called a spirit spouse, which is called incubus or succubus which we bind and rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. These entities work with inside the waters, conjuring when people pray, just like how earlier, you know, the Lord tells you to go do something, you go do it. And on the opposite side, these people get offers from Satan. Hey, pray this and send this into this person's dream and if it's successful in carrying out them to commit this sin guess what you get a payment and this is why celebrities are paid so much is because they push the masses into what worldwide sin not just we're talking about worldwide sin on a glow or global scale because of the level of influence they push well, their payment is that. Their payment is the fame. Their payment is the money. And this is the exchange that they get for selling out their brothers and sisters to the manipulation of sin. To cause an open... It says every time that we willfully sin, we, we put Jesus back on the cross. And he, f he told us to flee from sexual fornication so much that every time that that happens, it's like, oh man. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's not forgiving you or he's not forgiving you. I'm just telling you that you have to understand the seriousness of this. And the reason that he keeps gracing your life is so that way you can escape this bondage. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Now this, this bondage, um, now you can see also how through these systems, right? Now you have, you have the entertainment industry and then that then pumps in and then you have the pornography industry, which is directly connected to this as well. And then you go even further. And then now you're talking about because these doors and windows were open, you have people who are now addicted, who are now mentally ill, who are now because of the spirits and now they are actually... <laughs> You know, some of them are out committing violence. So who who benefits off this? Well, police agencies, big pharma, and um, the healthcare industry. That's who benefits off this. And then you look and you see, okay, well, if it triggers crime and it triggers this, then that means what? Well, since all crime has what a monetary attachment to it, they're getting paid because you messed up and sinned. So the reward for them to arrest you and throw you in and do all this through your sin and your disobedience and rebellion is the payment in exchange for the monetary gain. Then that money, when you look at the statutes and codes, which are different than laws. Now there are laws and then there's the constitution and the bill of rights. 
but there are statutes and codes which most cities and local governments operate in, and then it goes to the federal and then to the, to the big guys. Now, where does all this come from? Well, all that money, well, it sources and then it does what? It, and you can look this up through Black's Law Dictionary and through the Uniform Commercial Code. You follow the money and then you'll figure out where all of it goes. So then that money goes where? Back over to England to the crown. And then you're like, okay, it's odd. So that's the lineage of those bloodlines that would be super close to what would be considered the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati, which do the will of Satan to raise his will to earth, while us, we bring the will of heaven to earth. Their networks are everywhere through secret societies such as Freemasonry, Shriners, Eastern Star, Skull and Bones, all these different evil secret societies. This is, this is the breakdown of their organization from the top of the what? The pyramid to the all-seeing eye of who? Lucifer, their god. In this breakdown, as it comes down, these people strategically are placed with inside of the paradigms of each of these systems, the entertainment industries, the police forces, inside of the um, inside of the healthcare industries, they are in facets of government, they're everywhere. Business, it doesn't matter, they're everywhere. So, then you follow, well, where does that money go to? And that goes all the way to where? Take a guess. Oh, you guess Vatican? The Vatican? Okay. And why is it that they pay no taxes? There's no tax there. There's no nothing. They just have a place that's, they have their own bank. And all their symbology is very, very odd. They have the giant arena that's a snake's head. They have the phalluses erected. The phallus, which represents the penis, is erected up which is raising up. Now, when you go and look at the exact measurements of certain phalluses, they equal out to, well, the numbers of the beast. Because what this all comes down to is preserving of bloodline and initiating of mixing of bloodlines. This is why it says, in the last days, it will be like the days of Noah. Now, why did God flood the earth in the days of Noah? Well, because the watchers in the second heaven decided women are beautiful. We're going to come down and we're going to sleep with them. And they came down, they slept with women, and then the bloodlines mixed. And in doing so, what happened then? Well, there was a interbreeding of the angels with men, with women, and then that created the offspring of the Nephilim and the giants. And these are the beings, the entities and spirits and demons that roam through the earth. <sighs> Now, these entities God didn't create. They came about because of, they just came about because they made their choices. So God does what? He floods the earth 
to preserve his bloodline. Now you ask yourself, well, how is it like the last days of Noah are the days of, you know, what, what is the mixing of the bloodline now? Well, you have the agents who sleep with unsuspecting humans, which would then, if they can get them into an actual marriage, then would produce a seed that would be a hybrid or some type of ungodly offspring. Or you would also have, you would also have, give me a second. Oh yeah, this is where I was going with that. So the you have the um, the mixing of clay with iron, and this is why everything or clay with um, nanotechnology. This is why everything is happening with the vaccines and the masks is because they are looking for a way to exterminate the true bloodline of Jesus Christ. Now here's the thing: when you come into a covenant with God and you go through deliverance and sanctification and process, you then are given a hair and you become an inherent seed. So the moment that that happens, you then are saved and redeemed and welcomed into the family of God and given new blood, a new heart of flesh and not of stone, a new mind that's renewed to see sin clearly a new soul, and you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Now, this is why they, you know, they're doing the swabs, look, trying to see whose DNA is what and who is who. So that way, when they're ready, good and willing and ready, whatever plans that they have that they want to try to do as far as mixing of people giving up their inherent birthright. That's why in Genesis it talks about how when the older men would go to pass away, they would pass down their what to their children? Their birthrights. Because they had lived in obedience so long to God that they have gathered up so much virtue that would allow them to fluctuate with God so much and be so in tune with God that they would have, that God would bless them with land, that God would bless them with wealth. See, every promise in here is accessible to the children of God, every single one. When he talks about, I will give you all the lands and I give you full possession and dominion and authority over all the earth, all the beast, all the cattle, over all the serpents and scorpions. Why does he say serpents and scorpions? Well, it's easy because the foreign bloodlines that are here, because not everybody is human. It gets deep. It gets deep. It gets deep. So, with that being said, There is a way out. And thank God that's Jesus Christ. So the next stage of what they think they're going to try to do is, of course, they feel like they've primed the body of these um, humans now. Where either they're going to turn them into robot slaves, more so. Or they just fry them through the technology or whatever their plans are. Who knows? It doesn't matter. We know that God works out all things for the favor of those who love him. And we are not of this world. But the important thing is now is that you understand that the interconnectedness of how all of this starts. That all of it starts from that originating point of the breaking of your original covenant. And that's why 
in Proverbs, again, it says, she has forsaken her covenant with her Lord, her original covenant. She has gone into many houses. She has gone into many houses. She has laid with many. And the ways into her declineth into the steps of hell is because you've opened those doors and given yourself access to legal access. So I want you to repeat after me and we're going to go through this now. Father God, I, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the blood of Jesus. I ask that you would forgive me, Lord, for all of my sexual immorality, for all of my fornications, for all of my perverseness, for all masturbation, for all pornography, and anything else that my ancestors have done as well. I choose to stand in the gap now, and I ask that you would set me free through the power of your Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. I now break covenant with the marine kingdom and all of its agents I issue a bill of divorce stamped in the blood of Jesus to all spirit spouses I am not your husband I am not your wife I do not want you You have no legal grounds to be here. And I now approach you, Lord Jesus, as judge. I ask that you would weigh on your scales, Father God, according to John 10.10, 10, as the thief has stolen from me, Lord. And I command that you would make the thief pay back everything that he stole. I now choose to step into my birthright of the Abrahamic covenant. I ask that you would show me your grace and your mercy. I thank you for the redemption of my soul and for the blood you have spilled to cover my sins and saving me from the depths of hell. Amen. Now all you have to do is just receive this. Take in three deep breaths. By the power and authority that I have through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I now bind every principality and power and dominion from the waters operating in and around this vessel, all serpents I bind through the blood of Jesus. I now bind Asmodeus and all of his legions. I now bind Abaddon and all of his legions. And I now bind Jezebel and all of her children. And by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth through the Holy Spirit, I command you to loose this vessel and go. I call on fire to rain down on the altars and thrones of witchcraft that have binded these vessels by the blood of Jesus. Fire in Jesus' name. 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 I ask, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would now begin to fill the areas 
where these spirits and demons had legal strongholds. They are now broken by the blood of Jesus. That serpent that is still moving inside of the stomach, I cut your head with the sword of the Lord, come up and out. I call for fire to come in the belly, fire 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 in the belly. Loose from the throat and the chest and come out. Loose from the spine, the serpent wrapped around the spine, I sever your head by the blood of Jesus and the sword of the Lord. Come up and out of the mouth by the blood of Jesus. Keep coming out, keep coming out, keep coming up and out by the blood of Jesus. Drink the blood of Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus into their lymphatic system, into their glymphatic system, into their exocrine system, into their muscular system, into their skeletal system and into all the members of the body i speak the blood into their eyes into their ears into their skin into their hair into their nails into their teeth and into their mouth and into their tongue i declare that where the blood is no demon will be able to survive and through the power of the holy ghost i command you to jump vessel and go now through the blood of jesus I take full authority and dominion over the environment by the blood of Jesus and declare that you will not transfer from one person to another, but you will go where the true Lord Jesus Christ commands you to go. Go to the pit on failed assignment. I cancel your assignments off my brothers and sisters life by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Keep coming up and out. That serpent that's stuck and lodged in the heart, I sever your head by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out, come out of the chest. You will not go back down into your pit. I break the powers of the witchcraft in the first and second heavens, binding you by the fire of the Lord. Fire in Jesus' name, fire in Jesus' name. Fire, 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 fire. Father God, I now ask that you would loose legions of your deliverance angels with sickles dipped in the blood of Jesus, soaked in the oil of anointing and lit on fire by the Holy Ghost to rip these serpents out by force through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the light penetrate the darkness by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, I ask that your Holy Spirit would set them completely free now through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now just thank, thank him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 That one that is binded with Leviathan, I declare that it says that the Lord will give the meats of Leviathan and dash him in pieces. I ask that you would loose Archangel Michael to run a hook through his nose and pull him out, out of the soul, out of the mind, out of the heart, out of the belly, out of the spirit, out of the system. I ask, Father God, that if it is in your will, that you would break the bands of Orion, the octopus and the squids, and that you would drain the waters below and above and every point in between, and that your angels would dump the blood inside of it now, according to Euphrates, and that they would be loosed in Jesus' name. I cancel your assignment now through the blood of Jesus. Forfeit your legions. I bind your gatekeepers. I bind your strongmen. Any remaining strongmen that are inside of this vessel, I bind you now and command you to loose and go to the pit by the blood of Jesus. Go now through the blood of Jesus. All Jezebel spirits, Jezebel and all of her children, Delilah, I bind through the blood of Jesus. I declare that you are the whore that never marries. Hike your skirt and run across the waters. Hike your skirt and run across the waters. Pack your bags. Pack. I kick you out of your windows. I kick you out of your doors. I kick you off your throne. Let that household witchcraft binding you catch fire through the blood of Jesus. Let that household witchcraft binding you catch fire by the blood of Jesus. Loose and go now by the blood of Jesus. 
I now declare your total freedom and restoration through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, I pray that you would give them new blood. I command the chambers of the heart to open up and pump new blood. I speak that you now have the heart of flesh and not of stone. I command the chambers of the mind to release the blood of Jesus Christ. I command the chambers of the heart to release the blood of Jesus Christ through the entire system, from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. And I ask, Father God, that right now, by the power of your Holy Spirit and your Holy Ghost, it says that you came to baptize with fire. I ask that you would baptize them in fire right now, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And welcome in, guys. Welcome to the Abrahamic covenant of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who spilled his blood for you to be set free in this moment. And if you're still receiving deliverance from this, I would just recommend that you would just rewind this um, from where we started at. Um, I know for me, the level of bondage that I was in, the Lord took me through a process and he walked me through. So don't think that if you didn't get all the deliverance today or if there's other things that come up, just remember that it's very key at this point that you still live in, that you begin to live in obedience because now that these things are kicked out, they're gone. But it says that, you know, these spirits will roam in dry places and try to come back. And that if the doors are open, if you have doors that are open, you know, Father God, I pray that right now in your will, that your blood would shut every portal, every door, every window, every gate, every stargate, and every ley line above and below that would have connection inside or out to my brother and sister, and you would sever it. I sever their communication lines from them now by the blood of Jesus. It's super important now that you live in obedience. Live in obedience. It's not that you're not going to get tempted, but the Lord will not allow you to be tempted past what you can control, past what he will allow you to go past. He'll never lead you too far. He'll never allow you to go too far into it. Just trust the Lord. That's all you have to do. Trust the Lord. Keep resisting and keep fighting. Pray and pray and pray. Your prayer life has to be on point. You have to stay in scripture. You have to speak scripture over your life. This is a war. And we're on the winning side. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much. And I pray that the Lord blesses you and that he covers you and that you just begin to feel the joy of the Lord and that that cloak of heaviness is now replaced with the garment of praise and that you will have beauty for your ashes. And I just declare that the Lord is going to restore you. He's going to restore all the years, all the years that were eaten, all the years that were eaten by the canker worms and the caterpillars and the locusts. He's going to restore all of it because this is how good he is. This is what he always wanted to do. You're going to feel the unconditional love. You're going to feel the unconditional forgiveness. You're, gonna, you're going to experience Jesus Christ of Nazareth through the power of the Holy Spirit on a whole other level. Thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and may God be with you for all your days. As it is written, he will never leave you or forsake you. And I will see you one day up at the gates, baby. In Jesus' name, amen.